One moment. Terrific. Welcome, welcome. Today is Monday, June 19th. And I'm so excited to be having Addie Owens here as we admit people in because we're starting right on time and we'll end right on time. But if we go over, that's okay, Addie, don't worry about it. Um, thank you to the leadership team here. So let me just, who I see, we have a network director, Yolanda is on here from Connecticut, Greg Hanner, immediate past president, Lisa Parento, of course, our tech expert extraordinaire, Education chair this year is Christine McClellan. And of course, we also have Addie Owens here, who's on the National Board of Directors and also a CRS instructor. Addie is going to be teaching on, I have to look, the, double check here, on September, Friday, the 8th of September in Portland, Maine. We're going to have a live only class up there. Uh, Monday the 8th in Portland. Uh, exact details are coming up, but we'll have some time in the next week or two to to land that plane, Vicki Kennedy, um, our newest state network director, um, our network director from the state of Maine is uh, coordinating that all. We're really excited about that. And actually Addie's gonna be in New England the day before teaching class. So Addie, why don't you take it away? If you wanna do a quick intro to on yourself, where you're from. I don't have your bio up in front of me, I'm sorry to say, but I know you're from Florida. Yes, I am. Hold on one second, let me get the screen situated. Um, so as Addie's doing that, she's a CRS from the Florida area, mm -hmm. and you can tell us where in Florida, and you're a broker owner. I am. Since now cool. doing instructing, and go ahead, Addie, you can do, I'll talk a little bit. Um, just about a month or two ago, I saw Addie at a WCR event. We are collaborating a lot with WCR, and it was about realtor safety. So she's going to be up here like I said earlier, in central Massachusetts for their Realtor Association of Central Massachusetts, uh, talking about realtor safety. And you also, you do that through the um, foundation, the uh, uh, Carter Foundation. And it was really a powerful uh, course that you taught. So go ahead, take it away, Addie. It looks like you're all set. All right, thank you. Sorry about that. I had to figure out how I could share my slides here and, and, and not get off track. So yes, we are doing a safety class on um, September 7th. Central Mass is going to be the location. Um, this class is put on, it's it's a class that I wrote. It's called um, Intentionally Redundant Safety Plan um, because oftentimes we put like one level of a plan in and think that's going to keep us safe and it really doesn't. Um, you've got to have multiple layers in there, similar to how the FAA operates, right? They have a redundant systems intentionally for the safety of their crew and all of the passengers on a plane, right? Those, those systems are often like double, if not triplicate, and isolated. So that way, if one part fails, they've got a backup part to keep everybody um, flowing, flowing smoothly. Um, so something like a, a second engine, right? Got two engines, not just one. <laughs> And what is your safety plan and how can we craft that plan so that way we can keep you safe and alive? Um, <clears throat> Nora might be able to attest it. It got a little emotional at the last class. <laughs> so anyhow, and on September 4th in St. George, Utah, I'm debuting a new class. Um, we used to have, well, we still have the win-win negotiation class. It's eight hours. Well, now we're doing a four-hour negotiate the W techniques that win deals and close sales. So I'm super excited about that. Um, it is a four-hour class. It's St. George, Utah, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with that area, but it's right outside of the Zion National Park. And it is Labor Day weekend. So if you're thinking it would be fun to go to the Zion National Park on Labor Day weekend, you're right. And then you should take a class. <laughs> um, so the uh, safety class is September 7th. It's a great busy week for me that week. Um, we'll be kind of traveling all over the place. Um, and I hope to see you there. All right, so in today's middle little teaser session, we are going to talk about a couple of things, but we're gonna use technology called Slido. <clears throat> so if you are on your laptop or on your PC, you can join at slido.com. And if you navigate towards the top of the screen, there's an opportunity to join the Slido. You just type in this code here, 2676200, or you can scan the code up on the left-hand side from your phone and join that way. Either way, whatever is easiest, I'll let you uh, take a minute to join. <clears throat> if you just want to raise your hand, as soon as that's taken care of, then we'll move forward. All right, we've got two people. 
I see Melissa from California has joined us. Thanks for joining us, Melissa. All right, everybody ready to go? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna start here. <clears throat> when we say five steps to success in any market, we got to talk about what a market actually is. So there's a, a word cloud on. Well, let's see. Now I'm gonna have to actually present this. On. I have to change my share. Mm. Stop share. Joys of tech. Yeah, seriously. All right, can everybody see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, so we're joining at Slido. Everybody good? All right, so what is a market? Can you tell me what is a market? Is it an economy? Is it a neighborhood? Is it a city? Is it a zip code? What is a market to you? You can shout out the answers if you want. You don't have to type it on the phone, but it's just easier. How about when a person buys or sells? So there's something to buy, there's something to sell. Mm -hmm. It's a product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A niche. Yeah, absolutely. So the five steps to success class, we actually originally we were planning on just taking the class from the um, seven things successful agents do differently and dwindle that from eight hours down into four hours. But when I started writing the class, we realized this is an entirely different class, right? The five steps to success is good. It gave us a great framework, but the five steps to success in any market is drastically different. So yeah, it's a population and a type of business activity. So the five, the five steps to success in any market, if we talk about the market, it could be a neighborhood, a zip code, a change in economic conditions, um, a particular product, a niche, right, within a community. Let's say you've been farming one neighborhood for 15 years and it's suddenly like the turnover is just completely stopped. Are you going to keep farming that neighborhood? Probably not. You might want to switch into a different neighborhood that has different idiosyncrasies. That is a new market. So trying to set yourself up for success in that new market, because it is new, right? What does that look like? Change my slide here. So what does it take to be successful in real estate in that market? What are the different things that impact our success? What's the top, the number one thing in your mind? And again, you can shout out these answers too. I'd you don't say, have to be I'd say knowledge. Knowledge, yeah. Market knowledge. What else? Persistence. Oh yeah, absolutely. Delivery of goods or services to these participants. Mm -hmm. So that was more of a market question. What does it take to be success? Awareness, absolutely. Right. What about intention? Do you think it takes intentional activity? Right service mentality, consistency, for sure. You can do a hard thing once and not be good at it and never do it again. You're never gonna get good at it, right? And you're probably not gonna produce many results. So um, awareness from a different market, those are different answers. So if you wanna be successful in real estate, it's gotta start with mindset, doesn't it? Don't you think? I mean, the most the best foundation of any entrepreneur is their the mindset that they start with. So how many of us are independent contractors? Right? Are you independent contractors? Does that make you self-employed? <clears throat> Potentially. Are you self-employed? Absolutely. Or are you employed by the company you own? It depends how you look at it. <laughs> right. Right, but that's the mindset. So what are we starting with? Are we starting with that employee mindset? I'm an employee of myself, or I'm self-employed, I'm a CEO, or I'm just an independent contractor and I'm relying upon my broker, right? At my office, I see my agents as business partners, right? Mm -hmm. They contribute to the brokerage bottom line. We've decided that we're going to be partners in their business, right? I'm going to help them by giving them a, a, a safe place to hang their license, right? 
an opportunity to build their business because that's what the state requires. They require that we have um, that we have supervision as agents, correct? That's what the broker is. It's a supervising broker to make sure that the agents follow the law. That's the first line of defense against you know consumer protection, is it not? Otherwise, everybody could just go be their own broker. But how does the state actually manage that? So if you're not self-employed and you're the CEO of your company, right? You are the CEO of your company. What does that look like to you? What does that look like to you? Anybody? Do you have employees? Are you building your business partners? Yeah, you have responsibilities. Absolutely. What in the in the difference of the responsibilities when you own your business and you decide I'm going to be the CEO of my own company? Does it change the decision making that you that you might go through? Right. Yeah, you're liable. Got a lot of liabilities there. So. If you are your business owner and you've, you've been intentional with your activity, are you meeting your goals that you've set for 2023? Who here is by just the show of hands even? Are you meeting your goals? No. Okay. Thank you for being honest. Okay. Yes. Did you all set goals or you think about setting goals? You're like, eh, not so much. Well, kind of get where I go, right? When you, when you don't have a direction, when you don't have a goal, you're going to get there. 100%. Guaranteed. <laughs> right. Did you all set goals or did you just think about goals? Set goals? Yeah. So let's talk about some of the goals that we set this year. Christine, do you want to tell me what goal is that you set this year? Um. I don't have them in front of me, but my goals were to rebuild my business. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a lot of detail behind that. Yeah. The time. I well, need to redo them. Can you list like one objective that you wanted to meet by building, rebuilding your business? It was, um, which I've been pretty consistent in farming, at least in sending out uh, a piece of material to a farm that I had let go at least once a month. And I have been hitting that, but not, it hasn't converted. Who else? Greg, did you have a goal that you set at the beginning of the year? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, and it was to do a little bit less business so that I could be more consistent with the business that I had, but um, over overflowing with responsibilities in business, mm -hmm. making the inconsistency persist, which is annoying. It's tough. I think the hardest thing to do in real estate is be consistent because yeah. we're being pulled in so many different directions, right? Um, what about Yolanda? Did you have a goal? Uh, yes. Um, I have a coach. I'm in the Brian Buffini coaching program. Mm -hmm. So I, I talk to my coach every two weeks. So the the consistent goal that I have is I try to reach uh, five clients or five calls every day. Mm -hmm. and write three notes a day and I just got back from a um from an event so now I have more notes to send and I also have a budget that I plan for the year good excellent and also the other goal that I have is to reach out more CRS uh, agents throughout the country excellent did you order your directory yet I I rather not uh, <laughs> I don't know I'm on the fence about a directory yes yeah. It's a it's a very controversial topic this week. <laughs> I know. It's always that way. <laughs> it is. Well, what about you, Barbara? Of, oh, you'll, sorry. You'll, go I ahead, Nora. I have to give a shout out to Yolanda, though. This has to go. Like Yolanda has set up a major live class event in October for us here at CRS in New England region. And actually for anybody who wants to join from uh CRS in Guilford, Connecticut, not Hartford, Guilford, <laughs> which <I'm> <laughs> And that was a big goal. So thank you, Yolanda. Can't let that one go. Thank you. The registration link should be up this week. I'm just waiting on national for that one. Now, the reason I was asking for the information, I was asked to speak at one of uh, the business uh, meetings from uh, another company. That's why. Excellent. Which is good. Good job. All right, Barbara, did you have any goals this year? I did. I, um, I'm trying to meet with three 
past or current clients a week, whether it's for a coffee or breakfast or lunch or, or a lender or a loan officer to have three in-person meetings a week. And I also have a commitment to sending out notes. And uh, every month I send out 50 postcards to my sphere of influence. So, because if you have a goal of how many transactions you want to do yearly, you have to mm -hmm. figure out what you need to do to get to that. Um, unfortunately, I think this is a difficult market. I feel like we're scraping the barrel this year, but um, yeah, I think it's all about consistency is to, mm -hmm. if we keep doing consistently things to drum up business, to let people know that um, we are here to provide the service mm -hmm. and to try to distinguish ourselves from the fray, hopefully you plant enough seeds, ultimately we'll, we will attain our goals, whether it happens this year or maybe next year, but you know we got to keep working at it is how I feel. Yeah, that conversion rate really matters, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, how many note cards do you need to send out to close one deal? <laughs> exactly. That's... Yeah, scale from there. Yeah, but consistency is key. Anybody else want to share their goals? Vicky looks really ready. <laughs> it's okay if you didn't have any goals this year. Sorry, I hopped on late and um, just you're, getting up to speed. Sorry. You're, you're fine. We're just sharing our goals from the year. Um, but we'll go ahead and unless um, Corrine would like to share her goals. Um, this Corrine, is Corrine Geiger on? No. Okay. Um, my goal was to be more focused and, um, to be more attentive to the, um, the piles of papers on my desk <laughs> and to clear those out and and with that focus to become organized because without having those two things mm -hmm. like everything else isn't going to fall into place so um I am working on it and um from there I'll you know move forward on to you know the next set of goals yeah all right so if you had to just say like are you if you were more intentional about your efforts for 2024, do you think you could achieve those goals? Potentially. I think we have a habit of setting a goal and then not being intentional in our efforts to make those things happen. Like Barbara was talking about sending out, you know, 50 postcards every single month to her sphere, right? If she weren't deliberate about that and consistent, she wouldn't stay top of mind within her sphere. And 50 postcards is great, but how many how many postcards do we need to send out every single month in this market in order to get that one closing, right? Do we need to scale that to 100 or 150? Do we need to look at our sphere and think, okay, maybe, you know what, just like in a neighborhood, when turnover stops, do you keep farming that same neighborhood at, you know, at the vigor that you, that you have been? Or do you try to stay top of mind because you don't want to abandon that market, right? Those, that's, You've built up some um, professional credibility in that market, right? That market awareness or the professional awareness. Do so, and then shifting your efforts over into a new neighborhood, right? So when we look at those, and I'm using you, Barbara, as an example, just because you know when our sphere starts producing, we need to expand our sphere, don't we? So being intentional about how many people do you meet every single day. Um, the bar, the Buffini, uh, Yolanda, the Buffini um, sales system, right? It's send out three cards every single day, meet three new people every single day. Because what are you doing to that sphere? You're replenishing the sphere, correct? So if we are more intentional about replenishing our sphere and making sure that our marketing efforts are actually producing results, a lot of people throw money at a problem and hope things fix themselves, don't they? Right. We are realtors are the easiest people to sell or sell to. Why is that? What do they dangle? Just one commission. Shiny objects. Shiny, Shiny objects. <laughs> Shiny objects. And just one commission will pay for this whole investment. That's all you've got to do. Great. Well, how hard am I going to have to work for that one commission? Right. Are these leads that you're giving me actually like? real solid leads or am I going to have to do so much work on the back end if I spent that same amount of money in my market and that same amount of effort 
building those local relationships, would it have a greater impact on my business? You're darn right it would. <laughs> Absolutely it would. But are you willing to make that effort? Make sense? Yeah. So if we are more intentional about our efforts for 2024, do you think we could have achieved our goals? Probably. If you were to say today, if I actually set out for my 2023 goals, this is a great mid-year check-in point. Are you off track or on track? Right, let's be fair. Are you, if you raise your hand if you're on track. None of us, maybe, okay. But none of us can confidently raise our hand and say, we are on track to meet our goals. What could you do today that would change the directory of meeting your goals for 2023? Great. PC. Hire a PC. TC. Hire a TC. TC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because that could take take that back end, uh the back end stuff that I put off. Mm -hmm. Sits you on know? a pile on your desk. Um, no, I'm not actually not a paper person. Everything's digital. So yeah. got it. What about marketing? Anybody doing some marketing? I'm planning to work on real estate reviews. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's companies that will help you do that too. So if oh, you really? think about, yeah, delegating and automating, delegating and automating. That's what, that's what we've got to do to leverage ourselves, right? Delegate, automate. If you can't automate it, delegate it. Delegate it to who? Delegate it to a transaction coordinator or some sort of contract worker that you don't necessarily have to have a full-time assistant anymore. Right? You could have five different virtual assistants doing different things at different times that they excel in, virtually like maximizing your dollars to the fullest extent because everybody's working at their highest and best selves that you've got on your team. So what does your assistant look like today? Does it look like somebody's maybe just answering the phones for you? The transaction coordinator who's taking a piece of the work? How could you leverage delegation and automation in your business today. I would even break it down to even a small step saying hire a database. I still am like 20 plus years in the business and I still need help with my database management mm -hmm. and email marketing. So even breaking it down to that one piece, just starting small and mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah. So there's a, has anybody heard of Zapier? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So there is a, a business card app called BizConnect. And BizConnect is uh, linked to Zapier on the background. So BizConnect, you can scan the business card, create a list, right? It'll import all of that contact information. It'll add it to whatever list you dedicate it to. Let's say it's somebody that's a, a you know, a CRS from Alaska that you wanna be able to establish a relationship from or you know, your local network or just your customers or potential customers. You can identify that list, connect it to Zapier to your Gmail account. And every time you send or, or scan a business card and add it to that list, Zapier will automatically send an email to that person saying, it was great to meet you today, looking forward to working with you in the future. And you can export your contacts out of BizConnect so that way, that database management that you struggle with, Nora, it's already managed. If you just use the technology that's in front of us that we have available to us, and it's super affordable. Delegate and automate. You don't have to have a full-time assistant anymore. You can have an entire team supporting you in your business efforts. So here's what I'm going to conclude with. If you duplicated the efforts that you made today, if you did what you're doing today, Every single day for the end of the year, minus holidays, of course, are you closer to your goals or are you further away from them? If we're going to talk about consistency, we have to be honest with how we're spending or investing our day. So what did everybody do this morning? It's 1230, 1224 Eastern Standard Time. How late did we wake up? How late did we walk into the office? 
Did we screw around on the MLS hot sheet for a little while? Look at new listings. How much time did we waste today and how much time did we invest? If you duplicated your morning into the afternoon, were you closer away, closer to your goals or further away from them? Kind of a, a, a telling mirror, isn't it? We always wanna say that we wanna achieve our goals. We're really, really excited in January 2020 or 2023 when we set those goals out. I'm gonna do this. But did we put the work behind it in order to get it done? So the five steps of success in any market with the mindset of, I am the CEO of my own company, right? What am I doing to back that title up? Am I acting like a CEO of my own company? Am I putting in the work? Am I surrounding myself by team members who are supporting the mission, the vision, the values, and the expectations of the business that I started when I got my real estate license? Or am I acting like I'm kind of an employee and I have a broker that says I can and can't do things. Are we putting the behaviors behind the title? How many of you today could say, I put the behaviors behind the title with 100% assuredness? It's okay. That's what this class is going to help you do. Did I sell it well enough? <laughs> Oh, I know, I know we need to be prepared with answers and to take action. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. like what Lisa said too. I have to give a shout out to Lisa in the comments also to give mm -hmm. ourselves grace too, because it's not all 24 seven, all about real estate. It's the goals of, did I call the doctor? Did I, you know, reschedule my doctor's appointment that I canceled? <laughs> did I, you know, call my parents and check in with them to see how they're doing? So it's not always mm -hmm. all about real estate, but it's those goals, mm -hmm. those personal goals. Lisa, mm -hmm. any commentary on that? I think that's what you were saying. No, I just, yeah, I mean, I mean, for me particularly, you know, Tuesdays, as a lot of you know, is my day to be a glamour. And um, mm -hmm. I have to work really hard not to schedule anything on Tuesday. Last mm -hmm. week, I did really well. Tomorrow, I stink. Um, and fortunately, I have Fred, who's here to pick up some of that slack because we have the baby no matter what. Um, but, you know, I, those days I, I, I said, you know, uh, my prayer in the morning is to be able to be present with this little person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't realize how they mimic everything you say and everything yeah. you do. And, um, you know, I think as grandparents, we see the impact as parents we had in our children. Now we had no idea at the time. We're just like trying to make sure they don't die, you know, and feed them and whatever. But the, the, anyway, so I think there's, there definitely are uh, uh, certain, certain parts of our lives when other goals are as important. And, and also to, to, you know, getting down on yourself for not achieving something is really a big waste of psychic energy. So mm -hmm. give yourself some grace, take a breath and readjust your sales, S-A-I-L-S. Um, I really, really, really believe in that. And, and I don't do that as well as I should, but building in review periods, as I'm sure Addie mm -hmm. will, will teach, I'm sure that's a big piece of this, you know, making sure that you're not just reviewing in December for tax purposes, you know, make sure yeah. you're doing in March and, you know, now exactly. in June, you know, at least quarterly for sure. Yeah. So, and that's really important. Thank you for bringing that up. You know, we have, our goals are not just business oriented. If you're the CEO of your own, own company, you are surrounded by a team. So that way you can enjoy more life fulfillment, right? It's not about working 24 seven. It's about making sure that you take care of your family, you take care of yourself and you take care of your business, but do so on a consistent basis. Your family and yourself deserves to have that time cut out for you, right? Uh, uh, recreation, right? Means recreate, right? Being out, be able to go out there and take that personal time, get out of the business of business, but having that team to support you helps you do that. When you don't have the team, then that's when you really feel like you can't walk away at any point in time that you can't take a break. It's important to surround yourself with, with business partners that will keep the business running so you can go out and, and just find some you know, downtime. That's super important. Well, and, and I think what Lisa just said in terms of that personal component, building that bridge from the professional component some of the hardest things to do is to delegate because why you don't want to necessarily uh, you want that client experience to be five star. Yeah. And what you said, Addie, about 
you know, being the CEO and building the team so that you can deliver that five-star experience, that achievement, having that team now bridges that personal time that that Lisa is, is you know, putting a spotlight on, which is hugely important. And uh, yeah, this is going to be an interesting class. Yes, it will. <laughs> I promise it will be entertaining too. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun at this one. Um, it's highly interactive. Are we doing this one virtual too? I thought we were. No, we're we're going to see if that's going to be possible with Vicki. Vicki, I'm glad you're on. But uh, for now, we're doing it live only. Okay. Just see what our venue is going to be and have, what we're going to have access to on our venue. Well, let me know because I can bring my owl. I have one of my own. So okay. if you want to do it virtual, we can, I can accommodate that for you as long as we have good internet. So. Exactly. So we'll yeah, I would strongly recommend that for sure. Just let me know. Any other questions before we wrap? It's 1231 and I don't want to, I don't want to keep you too much longer. You have lunch to eat and business to build. Unless Vicki, do you have an update on the location? I know we're going to be locking that in in the next week or two. Is Vicki still here? She's off screen, so she off might be doing something. To put her on. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be finding out. So stay tuned to CRS.com. When you go into calendar and events, you'll be able to sign up in the next week or two. We'll have the actual link for that. And we're really excited. So, and I believe Vicki's working on main CEs for that. But, um, Excellent. you know, again, we don't really want to focus just on the CEs. It's all great to have all this information coming at us. So I'm really excited. And uh, for those who missed it in the earlier part of the call, uh, Addie's going to be in central Massachusetts for their Realtor Association talking about the Beverly Carter through, I believe, through the Beverly Carter Foundation, correct? Mm -hmm. um, about safety. And uh, that was a great class that I attended a couple months ago in the, earlier in the spring. So thank you so much. Any other questions for Addie as we round up? And we should have, we, Corrine, do you want to talk about next week? Oh, yeah. Woohoo! Yes. And this week, this Wednesday. And this week. Yeah. <laughs> Two events. Wednesday for lunch. Uh, if you're a CRS or RC member, lunch is on us in Newton, Massachusetts. So, yay. Great. Make sure you sign up. Uh, you can sign up on CRS.com. Or if you look at all the Facebook, the, the page or the group, there'll be a sign up sheet there. Bitly link is just to get a number for the restaurant. And that's at, on us. No charge. And then I'm going to have you take it away, Corrine, for Wednesday, the 28th of June. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so Wednesday, the 28th of June, there is a um, Hyannis Harbor tour and lighthouse tour aboard a catamaran that we have secured. Uh, they do these tours um, every summer and it's open to CRS and non-CRS members. So bring a friend, bring a partner, a spouse, whoever. Um, it should be fun. It's um, Boarding starts at 3.30, the tour starts at 4, we depart the dock, and it's it's a little over an hour, it's about an hour and 15 minutes, and then afterwards, uh, we are going to, anyone who's going to stay in the area or wants to join us, we're going to get together um, at a local restaurant to have dinner, um, and it's, um, I forgot how much it is, $30. $30. $30. $30 a person. Um, so yeah, you can go on CRS.com under events um, for the 28th and uh, follow the, the links to register. And feel free to buy a couple tickets if you know you want to bring somebody along with you, whether they're an RRC member or not. Um, so anyway, I think we have up to 40 people that can attend that so without it you know being full <laughs> and they'll have to say no to um, people boarding but yeah very exciting so we're keeping an eye on that membership too so we have I think about uh, 12 already signed up so get signed up in the next week yeah thank you thanks again Addie thanks everybody for being on the call here and as always Thank you to Christine, who will be reposting that on our YouTube link and the Facebook page and the Facebook group page. So really looking forward to seeing that and looking forward to seeing you September 8th, Addie. Me too. <laughs> Can't wait to see y'all in person. <laughs> great. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have a great day. Thank great you. Have a good Thanks, day. everybody. Great job, everybody. Thank you, Nora. Thank